God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. Our processional hymn is the hymn, Let There Be Light. Let there be light, let there be understanding, let all the nations gather, let them be face to face. Open our lips, open our minds to ponder, open the door of concord, opening into grace. Perish the sword, perish the angry judgment, perish the bones and hunger, perish the fight for gain. Hallow our love, hallow the depths of martyrs, hallow their holy freedom, hallow be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy spirit turn to language, thy people speak together, thy spirit never fade. Let there be light, open our hearts to wonder, perish the way of terror, how the world God makes. Let us pray together the call for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect epistle and gospel for the 23rd Sunday after Trinity are found beginning on page 256. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all godliness, be ready to beseech thee to hear the devout prayers of thy truth. And grant that those things which we ask faithfully, we may obtain effectually. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives in the great of thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the epistle. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians, beginning at the 17th verse. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have for us an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, 
and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change this lowly body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty, to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm is Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10, found beginning on page 357. Page 357, Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10. Let us stand and say this together. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Even the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious fire. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sit upon the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our citizenship is in heaven. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. If you want to get people really riled up, just start talking about taxes. Property taxes, sales taxes, income tax, doesn't matter which one it is, talk about taxes, and especially about raising taxes, and the blood pressure goes up pretty fast. 
If so now, even more so in Jesus' day, because taxes then had nothing at all to do with paying for things like schools or teachers or nurses or doctors or hospitals or social safety nets or any of the many different things in which most would agree governments provide for the common good. Taxes then had to do with brutal occupation by a foreign army, with oppression and political and religious and social tyranny. So if you're in a pleasant social setting with friends or just talking quietly with your co-workers and someone tosses out their opinion about the taxes going up and you realize that the tension is beginning to rise, imagine that ten times more so when the Pharisees and Herodians come up to Jesus with their question. It was a very carefully designed trap. It was tastefully packaged in flattery with just a little hint of praise. The kind of question that really has no good or safe answer. We hear them all the time from politicians of every stripe. They play well to an audience, both 2,000 years ago and today. Or, heads I win, tails you lose, as the old saying goes. Now, as you may know, these Pharisees and these Herodians were bitter rivals in their own day. But they could agree on one thing, that Jesus was incredibly dangerous. He was a threat to their power, and he, and he had to be stopped at all costs. The Pharisees were seen as national patriots. They deeply resented Roman occupation, and they resisted all forms of compromise with Roman custom and rule. The Herodians thought that the Pharisees were fundamentalists. They preferred to cooperate with the Roman rulers to try to make things better by compromising. So the question they came up with together was no random thing. It came from the very core of their differences. Jesus, is it right to pay taxes to Rome? Is it right to give our hard-earned money to support a government whose army occupies our country, whose soldiers have us by the throat? Is it right? And as you know, Jesus asked them for a coin. In effect, he asked them to answer their own question. The coin has Caesar's image. Obviously, it must belong to him. So give it back to him, Jesus suggests. And while you're at it, why not give God what belongs to God? Jesus is not trying to be clever. He's not just trying to escape their trap. He's speaking of a truth deeper than any question they might ever bring to him. Behind Jesus' carefully crafted answer lies the words of Holy Scripture, the words of the book of Genesis, words that speak of the mystery of our creation. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So is Jesus not saying that somehow God's image is in all of us, like Caesar's coin, we belong to God. When Paul, in this week's epistle, tells the Philippians that their citizenship is in heaven, he's speaking to a people who, for the most part, did not have the status or rights of citizenship. Taxpayers, yes. Citizens, no. But he's saying the same thing about us. The point of our readings this week is that we are strangers and pilgrims, that our citizenship, our real and fundamental and eternal home, is in heaven. And because we're already citizens of another country, because we're already citizens of heaven, we ought to live like that right now, to live on earth as it is in heaven, as we pray every day. And the very name of our gathering as Christians reminds us of the truth. We are a parish, in our case, the Anglican parish of St. Mary York. And the word parish simply means those who are homeless, those who are away from home. In other words, we are all together on this journey home. And this church is meant to be a kind of embassy of heaven, set up on earth. This is to be a place where all people may come to discover their true citizenship, a place where they gather to proclaim that we all belong to God, where we affirm our true citizenship, where we hear of its news and prepare for our journey back home. To worship, to live under God's rule, and to do God's will, to receive and to and to receive and to share bread and forgiveness on earth as it is in heaven. The struggle for us is to keep this focus, not to sell our birthright, not to sell our inheritance for a bowl of soup, as Esau once did. But sometimes we get lost in despair and confusion. Sometimes we see only the darkness of a broken world. We get discouraged. We forget that our hope is in Christ. No matter where we are, no matter what we do, we always carry God's image with us. It is our passport. It is our citizenship card. 
It may not always be easy to see when we stop resembling Christ in our lives, <clears throat> when we stop allowing God's image to shape our thoughts and decisions, when our behaviors belie who we really are. But try as we do, we can't leave God's image on the desk at work or lying on the back seat of the car, and we can't just shove it into our pockets like loose change. It is who we really are. It is our real image, the one that God wants seeing, looking back at us in the mirror, the one that he made. At work or in the classroom, in the dinner table, at the hockey rink, in the secrecy of our homes, in the dark corners of our lives, sitting in the pews, we live and work and play in this world. And we put on images and masks that the world demands of us to impress and intimidate, to survive and convince. But no matter how hard we try, we can never hide our real identity. We're God's, and he has made us in his own image. And Jesus invites us to be God's coin, to be the coin that God spends to the world, to be the image in which all people find hope and joy, peace and contentment, acceptance and forgiveness, to be the image of a loving and compassionate and merciful God. So who do you see when you look in the mirror? Who is looking back at you? Whose likeness and superscription are you? Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power, this day and forevermore. Amen. Blessed is he that considered the poor and needy, the Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come to thee, and of thine home have we given. We offer this holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and in thanksgiving for the hope that we have of eternal life, for grace for this journey home, in prayer that we might be the image of God in a broken and confused world, that others might find hope and life. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of all the saints, that we might share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our bishop, for Canon Paul Jeffrey's rector, and all the staff and students at Bishop McAllister College and Anglican Seminary in Uganda. For Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Ho in Ghana. For the people of our sister parish here in Fredericton, the parish of St. Peter and Canon Ross have their rector. And for all of our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the Anglican communion, for our fellow Christians everywhere. For our sisters and brothers in the Roman Catholic Church of Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome. For our sisters and brothers in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. And Bishop Michael Price, Bishop of the Eastern Synod that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people, for those who work in police forces across this nation, and for all first responders, that they might be kept safe in all their duties. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity.
that preserved from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Hong Kong, and Ukraine, remembering the work of the Queen's forces to protect and preserve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love, that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for all the sick, especially Peter, Dorothy, Anna, Megan, Richard, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Donna, John, Wanda, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Edmund, Mary, Esther, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, Lionel, Griffin, Dale, Christopher, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Riel, Marie, Pius, Cedric, Jerry, Debbie, Scott, Sarah, Ben, Michael, Pat, Philip, Terry, Aiden, Lisa, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Graydon, Charles, Adam, Eric, Martin, Paige, Mindy, Wilfred, Teresa, Shane, Rochelle, Deanna, Sherry, Randy, Grace, Maxine, Melanie, Matt, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Hudson, Suvro, Dini, Joe, Josephine, Shelley, Joey, and Pat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways today, remembering Chelsea, Judy, Aaron, Courtney, Linda and Mary, Vanda, Wendy, Martha, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Joseph, Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Evelyn, Sam, Mabel, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Sandra, Heather, Sean, Emma, Brenda, Brian, Emma, Sandra and Randy, Michelle, Jenna and Mitchell, Karen, Ashley, and Derek. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And let us remember all the faithful departed, especially George Curtis, David Torrance, Noreen Sullivan, Sharon Reynolds, Janine Pulver, Phil Claghorn, Brian Michael Knox, Valerie O'Brien, Richard Lorison, Edwin Spencer, Earl Clarence Blizzard, Betty Bushell, Laura Hatfield, Dean Amaro, and Dale McMullen. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. He that will truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, our love and charity with your neighbors, and tend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your heart, to make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in goodness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. 
This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with us. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounty to be that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the house. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy has given unto his Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for us, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, be thy humble servants of all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory. Do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy godliness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy country may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath commanded in us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for us, and is for the power of us, so that we are not to be Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and your family. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee, O Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory. World without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book, hymn number 803. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease, I will move thee. Thou hast granted my request, Thou hast heard me, Thou didst note my working breast, Thou hast spared me. Wherefore, with my utmost heart, I will sing Thee, And the cream of all my heart, I will bring Thee. Though my sins against me cried, Thou didst clear me, And alone when they replied, Thou didst hear me. Seven whole days, not one in seven, I will praise Thee. In my heart, though not in heaven, I can raise thee. Small it is in this poor sort to enroll thee. In eternity's too short to extol thee. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Lord, alleluia, alleluia.